Battle to a 3-3 tie through regulation. Sean Grandy and Tom Reed in Minneapolis where Ryan Bader, the true freshman, opened the scoring for North Dakota early in this hockey game. Shots on goal through the first six and a half minutes, 8-1 in favor of the heavily favored fighting through of North Dakota. And it's been all North Dakota at this point in the game. And Niagara having a very difficult time just getting the puck out of their own zone. And they're one of those teams that will just dump it out, dump it out, and then hope that good things happen. But the Fighting Sioux are not giving them any chance to really control that puck at all. Again through center. Randy Harris will try to bring it across. He does. Good speed by Harris. Backhand shot. Cole of the save. Second chance. Harris trying to retain possession behind the net. Can't do it. Zemo Makala works it in down low. Zemo Connor, senior will control for the Fighting Sioux. North Dakota, if you're just joining us, explosive offensively, four and a half goals, 37 shots a game. They're playing some of their best hockey right now. They have swarmed all over the surprising Purple Eagles of Niagara. In the opening, seven minutes plus. Niagara will gladly take an icing here just to slow the pace down and get the line change they want. Ryan Beta has the goal for North Dakota. Niagara just trying to hang on in period number one. You're watching NCAA Productions coverage of the 2000 Ice Hockey Show. North Dakota, a tournament championship last week, and how impressive were they, Tom Reed, against Wisconsin last Saturday? Was, uh, they were awesome. They go against the Badgers, number one in the country, and they just just kind of shut them down completely right from the get-go. They did set the, the uh, pace to turn the game by coming in and, and hitting very, very quick, and that just transcended the other players. So they have the same type of, I think, uh, opportunity here tonight with the way they're playing right now, Sean. They're, they're trying to use the, the speed they have, also the physical play that they've got. Isherwood shot, was stopped by Kohler. Third shot on goal for Niagara. A shot 8-3 here in the first period. Kohler lets it go. Ice is waved off. Homer can't control it. Big drive by Colin Rose. Marshall looking for the rebound for Niagara. Couldn't get there. Niagara, a much different team when they have to come from behind. They scored two early goals last night and simply proved they are 24-1-1 in scoring the first goal, which by my math makes them a 500 team, just 66. They do not score the first goal. Lee Gorn in deep. Now Niagara's forecheck for the first time causing some trouble for the fourth line for Niagara. Double hammer rolls it around for the fighting Sioux. Beta will clear it out through center. Should be icing. And it will be icing against North Dakota. They're first. Well, there's a look at Carl Gehring, who's a all WCHA first team this year. You look at his record also, his career record, 62 wins, and look at the goals against average. I mean, the thing is, he's five foot seven. Kohler's five foot seven, not very big, but the thing these guys do well is they stop the puck. There's no antics about them. They come in, they stop it, and just move it off to the side. You get so many goaltenders are all, all over the place, flipping and flopping. They, they are not the, those style of goaltenders. They just uh, come in here, and they have a very good defense in front, which certainly helps them. Aaron was just been brilliant the last couple of years, particularly in his rookie year in 1998. He, of course, was the goaltender for North Dakota in the last two quarterfinal games, losses the last two years. Scarper sails one wide. And we kept in. At the point, bounces through traffic off the stick of Missouri. Another defensive zone turnover. Lundball, his shot is blocked. Scarper tips it up high. Panzer would have been a high stick anyway. Panzer, second chance, keeps it alive. And boy, Niagara looks like a different team tonight in their own zone. Well, they have to be skating if they're going to be effective. And right now, the fighting two have got it pretty well locked up there. You saw about four or five dark jerseys just standing there, and the turnovers are going to be costly in their own zone. When you're in your own area, boy, you got to make sure that first pass is going to be right. It's got to connect. If it doesn't, the pressure comes right back. And you can see right here, Scarper who comes in, gets the puck over to Panzer. Panzer can't quite control. goes a little bit high. They just keep pushing the pressure. And right now, they've outshot their opponents 8-4. to four. So the last couple of shots really have come from the stick of the Purple Eagles. Dean Glazer will spot third and fourth line players. He basically will play three lines, but he'll take his 10th and 11th forward and kind of alternate them and make sort of a hodgepodge out of the third line. That's what he's got on there now. Roach kept it in. And will retreat. Niagara had a lot of difficulty last night against New Hampshire. They were able to survive it, but had a world of difficulty with defensive zone faceoff. Mackenzie, 25-year-old senior defenseman for Niagara. They are the oldest team in this tournament, and that is something when you consider North Dakota traditionally has so many of those players, 22, 23 years old, but far and away, Niagara is the most experienced, oldest team. 
on the 12-team field. Dean Harris, the freshman, got that in for Niagara. Timo Macko chases, forced to get back on his heel. Little man coming to the net, save made by Gardner, point blank. It was Noterman who had the chance. Perfect setup by Peter Armbrust. Gets his first unit on there. Ulmer holding, drops to the trailer. Beta walks in, fires deflected wide. And this has been a shooting gallery. Well, you watch them right now. They just are controlling the puck so well. And this team has such great speed and great vision of where each player is. They play so long together, and these guys just know what it's, what it's like and where they have to go in order to receive that puck. Icing is waved off here. I think so we'll expect it. Don't get it. Gore begins the rush. This is a dangerous line on the Olympic sheet. Beta rolls around Colin Rose into the corner. Takes the bump from Handrahan, who played so well for Niagara last night. Beta leaves it go for Ulmer. Back to Commodore for the point. His drive is blocked by a sprawling Heffernan, but ends up on the stick of O'Connell, who sails one in from the left side. Another shot and an icing, and Savonin will take it. Well, they waved that one off for whatever reason. <laughs> that is two in a row that should have been icing, and we're not. Gardner, he couldn't get the whistle, and finally they blow the whistle when the puck was free. So, <laughs> hey, everything comes out in the wash. The faceoff will be in the Niagara zone when we return. It has been all North Dakota to this point. Out shooting Niagara 9-4. We'll be back after these messages from the NCAA. The NCAA thanks its corporate partners who dedicate financial resources, talent, and expertise to help emphasize the vital role intercollegiate athletics plays in society and in the overall development of student-athletes. The support of higher education by these outstanding corporate citizens also provides funding for NCAA youth programs and NCAA championships. The NCAA and its corporate partners together building a better experience for our student-athletes. Well, these two teams right now battling it out, but it's 9-4 to four in favor of shots for North Dakota. 1-0 the lead on the scoreboard, and Greg Gardner has come up with some big saves for the Purple Eagles. Again, Niagara cannot clear with a face-off in their own zone. Scarperu sails one wide. Lundbaum, well, the fighting through, they smell blood in the water right now. Lundbaum circling to the middle, he's got all kinds of room, he shot. Gardner got a piece of it, he didn't see it, but he was able to stop it. Kasperk will clear the center. This entire game, through the first 11 plus minutes, has had the feel of a North Dakota power play. Kyle Martin, with a big second goal for Niagara last night, tries to center. But the Purple Eagles did not settle down last night until they scored their first goal. Casper in deep for the Purple Eagles. Beaten there by Jeff Panzer, who will clear out the center. Murray just fires it back in. He had no choice. And Niagara will be able to reset and finally get a change with the puck in the offensive zone. There's Jeff Panzer. Great speed through center. And the drop for Lundbaum. Lundbaum throws it towards the net over Gardner. He draws, keeps it in at the point. Harris, who scored the first NCAA tournament goal in Niagara history yesterday, lead for Sebastian. He's got some good speed. Sebastian shot is blocked by Commodore, never got through. The steal from Randy Harris. Niagara wanted to call, they're not going to get it. Spiewak at center, got caught up in his own man, Noterman. The Purple Eagles will come the other way. Harris across the line, but ahead of the play on left wing and offside is Chris Sebastian. Well, Sebastian was looking for the puck, but just a little bit ahead of the game, and so that will result in the offside. But if the Purple Eagles are going to have any effect against the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. What they've got to do is beat them on the defense. Defense uh, a little bit slow, so perhaps. So you look at Commodore, big, strong kid, knows how to play the game, but doesn't have the foot speed some of the other ones do. And so you play on him a little bit because the Purple Eagles have got some guys who have got some speed and can come around on the outside. For those of you who are watching Michigan and Colgate, we will get you back to the Pepsi Arena in Albany for that overtime period. Where it begins with Ken Daniels and Cap Raider in the meantime. Glad to have you with us here in Minneapolis. This is the first of four national quarterfinal games that will take place over the next 24 hours. North Dakota, number two seed, they got the bye. Niagara defeated the University of New Hampshire here last night impressively, 4-1. Ulmer for Gorin in the middle, snapped it over the top. Andrahan bumps his man in the corner. You watch right now, and when you have a guy like Ulmer on the ice, and. You've got Gorin coming in behind. Those two guys work so well together. 
and they're able to just make that quick release with the puck. They get it from tape to tape, and the one thing they're so adept at is having that good speed going forward when they get the puck to get the good shot away at the same time. Lee Gorin, senior, property of the Boston Bruins, MVP of the WCHA Final Five last week here in Minneapolis. North Dakota was so very impressive in that tournament, as they have been here, out shooting Niagara 11-4 to through the first 13 minutes. Steve has done a tremendous job coming into this program. There's no question he's one of the key guys. Those of you watching Colgate, Michigan, back to Ken Daniels in Albany. All right, Sean, thank you. As Colgate takes the ice along with U of M, we're set for overtime, and Sean and Tom will rejoin you at the conclusion of fourth shot of the hockey game. John, you watch Gary too, and he makes the save, and he makes it look so easy, and he's right back for the next shot to come to him. Isherwood in deep. Savonin heads for the net. Isherwood back for Colin Rose. He can't play it in deep. He's going to try something else, which is firing towards the net. Good idea. Cole is the stop. Facing a goaltender that has played well, but not very well during the playoff run. An inexperienced playoff goaltender. Niagara's got to put some more shots on. Big hook check. And a turnover. Lundbaugh. Save Gardner. Panzer keeps it alive. Panzer is so unselfish with that puck. He'd rather make a good play and have one of his teammates score than him get the goal. Casper. In the North Dakota zone. Four members of the Sioux back. Panzer. Lundbaugh. Lundbaugh. Just to Colin Rose. Commodore will give chase for North Dakota. Line pass through center is going to create an odd man rush and a long drive by Handrahan that smashes off the pipe. North Dakota playing with a lead. Sometimes you can get a little bit careless. Especially when you are a run and gun offensive team. Casper across the line, throws it towards Cole, a fat rebound. It is cleared away. McDonald pounces on it for Niagara. Sharp angle shot deflected wide by Panzer defensively. Harris. Look for Sebastian. This is a speed line for Niagara, and they are showing it. McDonald out in front. Harris had a stick on the ice, but couldn't get the redirect. And you saw Harris in behind Commodore, and that's what I was talking about, getting in behind that defense and trying to get the stick down when you get the, uh, the opportunity to get the shots on that. McDonald rolls it in deep. Cameron, North Dakota defenseman. Down to the back wall. He turns it over. Another North Dakota turnover. Harris with a shot. Save Kohler. That rebound. Purple Eagles keep it in the zone. Gazoyan through traffic. Sails wide. Sebastian keeps it alive. Sebastian pulls it off the wall. Tried to put it to the middle, but Hammer regains his composure and regains the puck. Gardner will play it. So no icing. Caprio indirects it through stunt. Fourth line on for Niagara. Blaze McDonald will play them evenly throughout this game. Caprio driving towards the net. Just pulling his way forward. It dropped back to Adam Morris, whose shot is stopped by Kohler. Best sustained attack for Niagara in the hockey game. North Dakota up by two, but signs of life from the Purple Eagles. You're watching NCAA Productions coverage of the 2000 Ice Hockey Championship. The tournament. BC and Wisconsin will play later on tonight here, and then tomorrow they're all set in Albany. Boston University impressively defeating St. Cloud today. They will take on the ECAC champion, the Saints of St. Lawrence, tomorrow noon Eastern time, and then Michigan and Maine, and they have had some heavyweight fights in this tournament over the last seven or eight years. Great semifinal games in 93 and in 95. Michigan led 3-0 in their game today, lost the lead, had to go to overtime to win, the irony there is that they trailed 3-0 last year to Denver and came from behind a win in the first round. Heffern. On the way of the line. Travis Roach moves it through center ice. McKenzie jumps up. McKenzie for Niagara. The defenseman jumping into the play. Heffern in shot. Save Kohler. And Niagara sent somebody to the net looking for a rebound for the first time that I can remember. Odd man rush. It's going to cost them though on the other end. Gorin holding. Gorin puts it side of the net. That actually hit the post and slipped through Gardner. Niagara gambling for the first time this weekend. Down by two. Beta across the line. Beta drop for a trailer. Gorin it comes all the way through. Roach is going to have to play it in deep while North Dakota resets. Panzer with four check on Timo Makala who 
Lost his balance. Now Martin comes back to help him out. Martin directs it off the wall. Pulls it into the North Dakota zone. Kyle Martin with a shot. Save made by Kohler. Andrahan was there for a rebound, but his stick was held. O'Connell, the defenseman for North Dakota, that took care of him. Another defensive zone turnover. O'Connell through traffic, guarding to the save. Fat, juicy rebound is knocked to center. Well, we're seeing some chances at both ends with that puck coming into the slot there, but neither team has had the ability to get to it to put the puck into the net. Both Kohler and Gardner both have had some tremendous saves in this game. Niagara has outshot North Dakota now 6-5 to five in this second period. Well, college hockey fans, this time of year, NCAA tournament time, the most invaluable resource we have up here in the broadcast booth is the Frozen Four Records bucket. It has all the records, all the games, all the names in the history of this tournament, and it has all the brackets. You can look back, that's really the best part of the whole thing. The complete record of what a lot of us feel is the greatest show on earth, the NCAA hockey tournament. Only $12 for the NCAA Frozen Four Records book. Call 888-388-9748, Monday through Friday. Well, the one thing the Purple Eagles are doing right now is they're moving their feet better than they were in the first period, and they're getting some chances here in the second period, which we did not see in period number one. Use that Frozen Four record book last night to determine that the BC Michigan State game was the 16th longest game in NCAA tournament history until Michigan and Colgate surpassed it today. Knocked it down to 17. Andrahan turns it over. Noted and out in front has Gardner down for the first time all weekend. Gardner lost his composure flat to the ice, and guess what? The puck hit him anyway. Well, Noterman, I tell you, he's had a couple of good chances in this contest, but he has not been able to capitalize yet, but he made the right play by coming in there, but once again, Gardner had the body in the right place. Whether he's knocked down or whether he went in that position by himself, doesn't matter as long as he stops him. Morris. That's it. Randy Harris, who rolls it in deep. All Niagara goes on with a player change. Chad Missouri, sophomore defenseman, back to get it for North Dakota. Turns it over. Andrahan, shot for the point. Kohler has not been tested much. A couple of quality chances for Niagara in the second period. Most of the shots coming from the perimeter. Gorn across the line. Gorn has a trailer. Omer, tied up by Scott McDonald. O'Connell slides across to keep it in the zone. Good play by O'Connell. Gorn tried to lift the stick of the zone. Could not force the turnover. Down by Handran, who stepped in the North Dakota zone. His shot was deflected, sails wide. Cloud scored on one of those goals today. The closing moments of the game with BU, make it 5 3. O'Connell across the line. Trying to put it towards the net. Mazoyan deflected it. Sharp angle. Throwing out in front. Omer trying to dig it free, can't do it. Mazoyan moving ahead to McKenzie, who carries through center. Four on two, Niagara. Isherwood holds up. Isherwood has a man. Savonin puts it all the way through. McKenzie, the defenseman down low, is on his off wing. O'Connell moves to the center. Probably seen more good scoring chances for Niagara in the last six or seven minutes than in the previous four periods combined this weekend. Well, one of their strengths is their transition game. When the puck goes into their own zone, they pick it up. I tell you, they are the they are probably one of the quickest teams I've seen to be able to take it and move it right back ice again. They do not take the time to go behind the net. They just stop and come right back up ice. Niagara had only 19 shots last night. They've got 15 less than halfway through. We'll be back after these messages from the NCAA. By Roach completely takes the Niagara defense apart. Great feed by Roach in the middle. Loose puck. Gardner stops it once and twice. Omer was all alone on the doorstep, and Gardner got the stick down. And what a play by Roche, but I'll tell you, Gardner was so focused on where that puck was, he was able to stop it. Even when he was down in the prone position, sitting in the sitting position, you're going to watch where his head is. He's right in tune to where the puck has to be and, and what he has to do to stop it. Right here, you see, as he makes the first save, he's still down. He's got the stick off to the side, and what an opportunity for Jason Omer coming in there, but could not put it in. Once again, Roche doing a good job coming in. There's a little move right here, and look at Omer coming in. Look where the stick is. Oh. Hey, no. Thank goodness for wide sticks, especially goalie sticks, as it makes a, a big difference in keeping that puck from going in the net. It is with an extraordinary level of poise Greg Gardner has played this weekend. The scoring chances, the shots on goal, 27 to 15, so that is 25 more saves for that man. Greg Gardner, he has stopped 59 or 60 now of 63 this tournament. He 
Let me set the NCAA record if he was just joining with 12 shutouts on the year. He's a uh, senior out of Mississauga, Ontario. Just outside Toronto. All CHA first team and player of the year in that league. CHA College Hockey America. Fledgling College Hockey Division I Conference. O'Connell after a face-off win. It is amazing that Niagara has not been burned by those face-off losses in the defensive zone. Santa shot, turned away by Kohler. Again, if you just joining us, Andy Kohler, the sophomore from Winnipeg, starting in net for North Dakota. He may have been in the East Region earlier this afternoon. Carl Carey, regular goaltender for North Dakota, continues to remain on the sidelines. After suffering a concussion in practice about 10 days ago, Kohler, Played in the final five last weekend, won the tournament championship at WCHA for North Dakota. And I think if Dean Blaze really had his drillers, he would have loved to have Gehring in there. Gehring lost both those games in the quarterfinals the last two years. He was waiting for this opportunity like the rest of his teammates, but medically he just didn't feel like it was a good idea. Yeah, obviously uh, that has to come first, and Dean Blaze would like to have him in there. But he said, you know, I'm not concerned at all about having... Uh, our backup in there because Kohler's done a tremendous job for him. He's only lost three games in, in his career. How's that so for a backup? Far, yeah, not bad. And uh, he's played about, uh, I think, 27, 28 games, so he's uh, performed pretty well for them. Noterman has another great scoring chance off a defensive zone turnover. And I would suggest that Niagara has already turned it over on their own end three or four times as many times in this game as they did last night. Marshall is spilled for checking, and Niagara will have a power play and an opportunity to get on the board when we return. Midway through the first quarter final, North Dakota by two. You're watching NCAA. The Purple Eagles coming at 10 30. Niagara 0 for 1 on the power play, 0 for 3 on the weekend. Lead the nation statistically at 28%, as we have discussed. The number is under 20% against teams from the four major conferences. Roach takes a wild Roach. swing at it. And a rush offensively by Travis Cooch on the last sequence for North Dakota before the penalty. First line for Niagara, Savonin, Isherwood, and John Heffernan. 25-year-old defenseman Chris McKenzie controlling the puck here at center ice. Niagara is yet to have in the offensive on the power play. Here they come now. Savonin shot. Kohler lost it for a moment. It was underneath him. Still not sure he knows where it is. Yeah, that's a couple times in this game that the puck has gotten into his equipment there. He wasn't quite sure where it was back in the first period. Got in behind the pad. And, and you watch what he when he's not sure where it is, he does not move. He stays right there for fear that if he does move, it's going to drop down. See him look right here. He's kind of protecting himself. He can see taking that big stick of his and just putting it in front of the pass just in case it might be sitting there. Offensively, this would have to be Niagara's best period of the yes. weekend. Kyle Martin, the faceoff for Niagara. He is the national leader with 14 power play goals, number seven on the left of your screen. Tied with Ben Gite of Maine. Black Bear is the number one seed in the East will face number five seed Michigan tomorrow in the second quarterfinal in Albany. Enjoyed our wall-to-wall -wall coverage at CAA Productions this weekend of the eight tournament games. Four first-round games that you now completed, and this is the first of four national quarterfinals you will see over the next 24 hours. Two tonight in Minneapolis, two tomorrow in Albany. Hands are hand. As a man. Down low, it came on the stick of DeSantis, could not tee it up. The original shot from Casper. Hands are hand again, holding, firing, save, Kohler, rebound. It's underneath, Kohler has got it. Well, I'll tell you, the goaltending on both ends has been spectacular when it has to be. Kohler coming up with a couple of big saves again. Hanrahan does a nice job of getting the puck to the net. Good shot coming in the point position. But this youngster, only 5'7", we talked about before, he covers a lot of that net, even though he's not very big. He knows how to position himself. He watches the little fake here coming right up. Watch Hanrahan right here as he comes in the center ice position, just fires it nice and low. And you can see as all of a sudden as that rebound comes out, you've got both DeSantis and Kasprick both standing there looking to stuff on away, but they cannot put it in. Stopping all 19 is Kohler, and that 19 shots on goal was Niagara's total in their opening round win over New Hampshire. There's still eight minutes left in the second period. Makala will keep it in. Mo Makala for Chris McKenzie. 
Now Savona with a shot, save, call a rebound, score! John Heffernan, it's a power play goal and the Purple Eagles are on the board. Well Heffernan was positioned perfectly also where he had to be, out far enough so if the rebound came to him he will be able to do just that. Sidman does a nice job also getting the puck into the net. You watch here, controlling the puck back at the blue line, making certain the first shot is on target. It is, and the big rebound there, and all of a sudden he just steps out and Heffernan puts it away. The assist will go to Sivanen and also go to number three, Hanrahan. But a big goal for the Purple Eagles that brought them to within one, their first goal on their 21st shot of this game. Power play goal. Last night on 19 shots against New Hampshire. Everton's 15th of the year. Second in the playoffs and a goal in the College Hockey America playoffs. So now, saw the numbers from the when they score a power play goal. Let's see how North Dakota reacts. They carried the play for the first 25 minutes of this game. They were in complete control, but could only put two behind Greg Gardner. Now Niagara is on the board, and remember last night when Niagara scored, they played a lot better afterwards once they had their first goal. They have put together their best offensive period of the weekend here in the second period tonight in the quarterfinals. Like you said before, it's like a shark. You just all that blood in the water, and all of a sudden you keep on going back for it. And right now, that goal will give them that little bit of an advantage, a little momentum for them. Gardner sends it up the wall. Here's Sebastian could not clear the zone. Commodore shot, save, man, rebound, goal. Did Gardner get a piece of that? If he did, it was the save of the tournament. Sebastian rolls it in deep. Cole of the save. North Dakota has had some extraordinary offensive chances in the second period, and they have not been able to finish. Big hit by Beta. Loose puck center ice. Andrew Hand will jump up for Niagara. Long drive in on Kohler. Gave up the rebound. He gets run into. That was a bad idea. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Adam Morris, but now the fighting Sioux will have to be careful because you've got to let the referee call the penalty if you take justice into your own hands it's going to be matching calls well the interesting thing just a few weeks ago this youngster was had a, a concussion he was out of the lineup and they had to bring him back in the lineup he was dressed but it was the other guy the likes of Goring who uh, had to come through now he has been hit does this have an effect on him but there will be some penalties here Goring is on the ice he's kind of stretching right now just in case that Andy Kohler is not able to compete anymore there is Carl Goering who Dean Blaze had decided not to play tonight. Commodore, let's see if his retaliation cost North Dakota a power play. It appears, for the moment, that it will. Well, we'll see if there's going to be a, a double penalty on one side or not. But nonetheless, when your goaltender is hit like that, then you have got to step in and do something. You can't, even though it's going to be a penalty, you've got to make sure that, uh, that you protect him as best you can, especially when you're five foot seven. Commodore is a big big strapping guy. He just steps right in. We talked about his size before at six foot four, two hundred and twenty-five pounds. He Adam just goes right after Adam Morris. Two minutes for charging the goaltender and two minutes for roughing. It will work out for North Dakota. They will get the power play out of it. And I would have to agree with the officials call on that. The protection has to come in here. Kohler is still down. And there's a look at Carl Gehring as he gets uh, prepared just in case. But, you know, I think Kohler may say, you know, I'll be all right on this one. Just a little bit woozy, but that's the life of a goaltender. Well, if I, for the moment, if you will allow me to play devil's advocate, my only problem with the call would be, where was the roughing for Niagara? Well, I think, I think what the official looks at, you know, is the fact that the instigating, the instigating hit uh, created the roughing call. And it... It's, it's a known fact that when a goaltender is hit, somebody's got to go in there to step in, especially in that situation. And uh, in, in nine times out of ten, the officials will call it roughing to each side and tack on the additional penalty that uh, precipitated the whole incident. Just a little sidebar hockey discussion <laughs> as we await the power play. <laughs> East Regional Games today, Boston University, first round victory over St. Cloud. Michigan Wolverines lost a 3-0 lead, but... We're able to win in overtime, knocking Colgate out of the tournament. So we are down to eight. This is the first quarterfinal, and the first ticket to the Frozen Four in Providence will be punched upon its completion. North Dakota scored a power play goal late in the first period. 
scored by Mike Commodore. The defenseman pitching in. Commodore is in the penalty box now for North Dakota. Homer drops it back to Missouri. He tried to put one through traffic. It caroms off Kyle Martin. Carries all the way down. Martin and DeSantis, the forward penalty killer here, the two seniors for Niagara. Local Eagles sneak a defense pair change. It may cost them here. Omer across the line. Omer drops it. The goal who snaps it wide. Now Missouri. That's Omer. Zurich again. Again tried it through traffic this time, which doesn't come through, but Goran tried to turn it to Homer. That was knocked down. Escherwood off the dasher, out to center. Two on one break coming. McKenzie with Savona. McKenzie, Savona knocked away. Great back check by Missouri. Niagara still shorthanded, and Roach is there to intercept the pass, then turns it over. Escherwood, save made by Kohler. Short-handed chance for Niagara. And the Purple Eagles have come out of their defensive shell here in the second period. Boy, we have some, seen some terrible giveaways by both teams in their own zone. That was nearly a costly mistake by the Fighting Sioux. Scarper. Sneak off. Look at the point. The shot is blocked. North Dakota, instead of the extra pass, is taking the shot to the point, and they are getting blocked in the way. Niagara blocked a ton of shots down in last night's game. Yes, they did. They got those players who are willing to throw their bodies in front of that puck, whether it be a forward position or a defensive position. When you got guys who are willing to pay that price, I tell you, you can keep a lot of shots and point towards your net by now. Power play is over, but here comes Panzer with lung bomb. Save, Gardner! Rebound! Another save by Gardner! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> and Jeff Panzer had it right on the doorstep. He could not put it away. Greg Gardner is doing it all for Niagara. Keeping them in the hockey game. A one goal game late in the second. Greg Gardner putting on a show this weekend. We'll be back after these messages from the NCAA. Hockey game and how they can win games for you. Right now, 31 shots have come towards Greg Gardner. He stopped all but two. That shot's on goal number. You see Niagara with 15 secondary shots. Remember, they only had 19 the entire game last night. O'Connell has it steered aside by Gardner. Looks like he's sitting in a lawn chair. He's been that cool and collected in net for Niagara. The fall. Puts it to the side of the net. Spiewak was there. Never got through to him. Hey, Ryan Hale. Hey. Puts it to the middle. Spiewak drops it behind him. O'Connell holding. The sprawling play made by Murray. Distracted O'Connell enough to create a break for Niagara. Harris across the line. Puts it to the middle. Hits the skate of the defenseman O'Connell. Murray keeps it in. Got to roll along the wall. North Dakota will control. Niagara goes on a player team. Commodore pressured by John Marshall. Four lines playing equally for Niagara. They are a hockey team in the true sense of the word. They have played a system. And they are in a one-goal game in the national quarterfinals. Go figure. Ulmer across the line, Ulmer to the middle. His shot is blocked on the way by Handrahan into the crowd. Face off in the Niagara end. Well, don't forget, probably the feature match of the quarterfinals. A lot of people would consider these the two most talented teams in the country. The preseason number one team, the Eagles of Boston College, overtime winners here last night against the current number one team in the country, the regular season champions of the WCHA, the Wisconsin Badgers. And Great heavyweight fight. I wonder how much Boston College has to give after a physical overtime game last night. Well, the big thing is, Sean, when you win, you have that you have that adrenaline rush. I think those players right now, they'll overcome any tiredness they have once they hit the ice. That was a tremendous comeback for them. They just play exceptionally well, winning in overtime, and uh, that gives just a little more uh, more input in what you have to do in the next game. But they know they're in for a real dogfight. Those two teams are very solid teams and will be an interesting match. Boston College never led until Jeff Farkas overtime time goal. Game 11 plus minutes into the extra period. Failed all night long. All six BC goals last night scored in special teams. Five power play, one short hand. Beta across the line. Beta the extremely talented true freshman. Turns it over. Issue with great pass for Savona. Savona to the backhand. Kohler holds his ground. Savona with a nice play that tried to bring the puck in, but he didn't have enough room. He ran out of room and Kohler was right there to meet him. Savona 
Moves into the corner. Offensive explosion from Niagara here in the second period. Well, they're skating. They're skating really hard, and that's the, the key with this team is they're a fast team. And they can make some good things happen for themselves and as long as they have their feet moving. 16 second period shots for Niagara. Kyle Martin across the line. Casper goes to the net. Martin lost possession. We kept it though by Handran. Handran rolls it behind the net. Casper tried to pull it out in front quickly to Martin. Knocked away by Schneekler. North Dakota numbers if they hurry, but they're at the end of a shift. Run bomb across the line. Throws it through. Schneekler, the defenseman, pinching in. He was in the crease. Buck ended up in the crowd anyway. Now the one thing about the North Dakota defense, they've got those players like Schneekler that you just saw who were willing to move up in the play. That transition game is so important to both these teams. You'll watch right here. The little pass coming right up to Lundblom who comes in. He looks to the front of the net. Schneekler moves in there. Can't get to it as the puck is just thwarted thwart the last second. But uh, good heads up play all the way through. And you can see Gardner once again just in the right position to get to it. There is Schneekloff, sophomore. Calgary, Alberta. And Greg Gardner. 30 of 32. 34 of 35 performances in that last one. Unreal. Scott McDonald. For Niagara along the wall. Turn it over at the line. He does. Great job by Lundbaum to keep it in. Backhands it towards the net. Timo Makula is there to cover. Hands with great speed. Pans will throw everybody. Pans her to the forehand. Save made by Gardner, and he's got it. And the defensive play by McKenzie was just enough to prevent Panzer from getting good wood on. Well, I think Panzer also got a little bit of a check around the neck with the stick at the same time, but he has got some speed. We talked about the explosiveness of the fighting suit. This guy leads it right here. You watch as he picks up the puck and does it all by himself. He breaks in between the defense. Watch where the stick is. Comes up, comes up, and all of a sudden he just keeps on going for it. And look at Gardner, equal to the task again, as he just is able to follow all the way through, well focused on what he has to do. Comes out and look at the stretch. You wonder why they do those stretching exercises before the games and so on, to stretch out those muscles. There's a good indication why. Last night, Gardner was poised and in control. Tonight, he has been spectacular because he has had to do it. Shots on goal, 33-24 North Dakota. And the 34th oh. shot is another brilliant save by Greg Gardner. And you can see Tim Scarper, who right there, just looked back in dismay, like, how did he make that save? He's going for the top corner, but when you've got a goaltender who stands up so well, most of the time, he takes away those corners from you. And Scarper just hit right on the doorstep as the puck comes right off here. Right back in front, he's all by himself as it just locks in there, but he cannot lock it into that net. Keep in mind, as you watch this game unfold, as you watch this story unfold, face off run, shot is blocked. These Niagara seniors are players that nobody else wanted. Nobody recruited them. They came to Niagara in 1996, where there had been no program before. Four years later, the dream of making the tournament has come true. This is going beyond their wildest dreams. They're playing for a shot at the Frozen Four. Travis Rowe, another great individual effort, and his backhand shot trickles all the way through. That's the second time Roach has controlled it in the offensive zone in this period. Sabona will clear the center. Isherwood will carry out with Hefferman. Isherwood methodically across the line. Puts it to the middle. Hefferman tied up. Hefferman taken to the back wall. Isherwood trying to work it through for Niagara. One bomb on him. Final minute of period number two. Allen Rose. Still looking for that one final rush. Hands your hand, picks it off. Going to bring Niagara back on offense. Backhands it in deep. Purple Eagles are going to change here defensively for the final 20 seconds of the period. Roach let it go. DeSantis pulled it off the wall. DeSantis still hustling. Works it towards the net. That forces Cole to cover it. And means Niagara has earned themselves their offensive zone faceoff with 16 seconds remaining in the period. And that's where they want the faceoff to be, no question. They'd like to win that draw back and get a, an opportunity to shoot the puck at the net. You know, Blaze McDonald is very, I think, very happy with the results of these first two periods. He's gotten the one goal he wants. He hasn't given up a lot of goals. We talked to him about them being very solid team defensively. They do not give up a lot of goals, and that is certainly evident in this in these first two periods. Going up as soon as our intermission hits. Dean Blaze, North Dakota coach, will join us with his thoughts on the second period. And George Wasdecki, the head coach of Denver. We with Tom Reed. That's all coming up in our second intermission. Another one of those great NCAA flashbacks. I love those. 
Yeah, brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people. For, of course, for half of the people watching, <laughs> yeah. usually, or for some of very painful memory. Kyle Martin wins the faceoff. McKenzie going to bring it all the way down low. Wheels it out in front, deflects towards the net as the second period winds down. Niagara, a tremendous opportunity to tie the hockey game. This incredible story is not over yet. In the first period, Blaze McDonald's club appeared. They were going to be run out of the building. They trailed 2 0. North Dakota had 19 first period shots, but in the second, we saw something we have not seen from Niagara in this tournament yet. That is four checking, skating in the offensive zone. They had their best offensive period, and they are within one after 40 minutes. Well, they did. They came into this being the underdogs, and everybody said, well, they don't know who we are. Well, they know right now who they are, and they're certainly bringing that to even uh, more evidence that the, this team is a team that, to be reckoned with. We said before they have a lot of seniors in their lineup, 13, just a four-year program, but boy, they are playing like they've been around for a long time. North Dakota coach Dean Blaze joins us downstairs, and coach, while a lot of people just looking at the score or don't pay attention are probably very surprised, I'm sure you're not at the effort of Niagara. No, uh, after watching them uh, beat New Hampshire last night 4-1, uh, to one, uh, they're a gritty team with a great goal to They've got uh, 15 seniors, and that kind of says it all. Dean, when you look at this team right now, I know it's kind of frustrating, obviously, to your players because you've, you've had some great scoring opportunities, but can't put it in. What do you say to your players at this stage? Well, I'll just stay with it. Uh, make sure you don't uh, press too hard that you give up uh, outnumbered situations, you know, the three-on-twos and the two-on-ones, and, uh, you know, fundamentally everything's uh, going well, but we uh, just haven't scored a lot of goals. Well, what is with your goaltenders? Can they avoid getting knocked down? Well, it seems <laughs> that seems to be the uh, case uh, for the last probably month. Uh, either Carl's got a concussion or a headache or Andy gets run over as you saw there in the second period. I uh, thought it could have been a five but uh, you know evidently Andy was all too far. Coach 20 <laughs> minutes <laughs> yeah 20 minutes away from the frozen four good luck in the third period. Thank you very much. That is Dean Blaze the head coach of North Dakota and you see a very uh, a confident smile on his face. He feels good about his team. They lead by one headed for the third. Headed for the quarterfinals tomorrow. The two first round games took place earlier today. I'm going right now over North Dakota. With us right now, the head coach of the Pioneer, the Pioneers from Denver, George Gwazdek. Yeah, I guess first of all, George, as a coach, you look at Niagara. What's your what's your uh, input with a team like that just coming in for their first year? Well, I've been very impressed with the way they're playing, but I think the one thing a lot of people have, have not really looking at is their roster dominated by seniors, 15 seniors to be exact, and it really helps an awful lot in just the, in the game experience, in the strength, in just the understanding of how to play, no matter whether you're down, you're up, you're playing in a big game. They haven't had the experience of playing a national tournament, but that, that age and that, uh, that experience that you get when you are older as a team has really helped them. You know, when you look at your team, Denver not being here this year, that's got to be a big disappointment to the players, but also from a coach's perspective, you, you have goals that you hope to attain each year, and when you don't make the big dance, when you don't get a chance to come down, what's it feel, feel like for a coach? It's been difficult. I mean, there's no question. Last weekend at the Final Five to sit around and, and uh, our, our showcase event for the league and yet not being able to involve is difficult. The same thing here. I am. My official function here is a member of the Western Regional Tournament Committee. I'm not quite sure what that means, but uh, <laughs> I, I do have some obligations before and after the game to make sure that the coaches and the, and the teams are, are getting what they need to do as far as the procedures are concerned. But there's no question that uh, anybody who's not here would love to be here. And we've had, uh, we've had great experiences in the national tournament over the last few years, and, and uh, we had a little bit of a, a challenge this year with our inexperienced team, but um, I expect we'll be back next year. George, when you look at the different rinks, and Mariucci being a trail of the North Dakota fighting two, but only by one, two to one, as we head towards the third period in Minneapolis. Sean Grady, Tom Murray back upstairs, and uh, in the first four periods, we saw some great defensive play by Niagara through center ice, very disciplined, but we hadn't seen the offensive side of the Niagara team. Well, they outshoot North Dakota in the second period. They put a lot of pressure on them. Well, the, the one thing about Niagara is that when the transition game in their own zone is so quick, and they like to move into it. You'll watch here as they move offensively, taking the initial shot, but they have everyone coming right towards the net. Hanrahan does a nice job of just hanging back there long enough to be able to take that puck and put it right in. But that's a big goal for them. And as long as they got the goaltender, Greg Gardner, the way he is playing, Niagara has a chance to beat anybody in this tournament. Don't kid yourself. 
third period coming up from Mariucci Arena. One of these teams is headed to the Frozen Four in Providence. Niagara or North Dakota? We may find out in 20 minutes of hockey time. We'll be back with the third period after these messages. The original, Tom, about this comment, but the longer a game like this goes, the underdog feels better and better. Absolutely, no question that uh, right now the Purple Eagles have a very good feeling for themselves. Dean Blaze said to me before the game, I'm not too worried about this team. Right now I think he has a little more concern than he had before the drop of the puck. It, it was kind of interesting. We often talk about the body language of players. I thought it was very interesting how calm and even jovial Dean Blaze seemed after that second period. I think he feels he's got the better team. They're playing well. They're just running into a hot goaltender right now. And the important thing is to not panic. Yeah, and, and what do you do? I mean, you're the point right now. You were looking for 50 shots. You're close to that. You're, you're meeting what your expectations are that way. But when you hit that goaltender, it just stymies you all the way along. You know, the frustration starts to set in. What he has to make sure is his team doesn't forget about the defensive part of the game and then everybody start pressing trying to get more goals. Right now they're winning this contest. They don't need any more goals to advance. But uh, sometimes you have to tell the players that to make sure they understand. Mike Isherwood. For Niagara, loses it again. Roach pinching in, has a man breaking, but Timo Mackle, the defenseman, sprawls on the puck before he can center it. Boy, Roach has had a very strong game for the Fighting Sioux, and the one thing is they know that how well that the Purple Eagles can block shots that we talked about before, and they said, you know, we'll just hold back, we'll fake the shot, let him go down, then we'll be able to move right down. Another turnover, and it's banged home by Lee Gorin. The senior finishes it. Niagara's been playing Russian roulette with those defensive zone turnovers all night. And a minute five into the third period, the Fighting Sioux take a giant step towards the Frozen Four. Well, the one place Lee Gorin likes to hang around is in front of that net area, no question. And he always has a stick down on the ice. You watch here as all of a sudden the turnover takes place. Just battling here, and all of a sudden you see a Commodore moving in there, but the pass comes across ice from Panzer, who just makes a perfect play right out of the stick, and you can see Gardner's legs are long, but they're not long enough there. He could not control it. It's in the net. A big goal for the Fighting Sioux comes early on in this third period at one minute and five seconds. And with it, Lee Gorin takes the national lead in goal scored, his 32nd of the year. Panzer will get the lone assist at 105 of the third, and again, Niagara is down by two, and here comes North Dakota again. Panzer, bumped hard by Handrahan, who's had a great weekend defensively for Niagara. Kasperick has a step, moving on Commodore. Kasperick to the outside, Kasperick puts it to the middle, Martin couldn't tee it up. The lead, Ryan for the breakaway pass, Colin Rose broke it up. One bomb, it snuck in behind everybody. All teams finishing a player change. That goal for North Dakota came in the middle of a player change. The pants are jumping on the ice. Spiewak. The Lundbaum going to the net. Noterman has been all over it tonight and a couple of great scoring chances trying to create another one. Still to be Chris Sebastian. Speedy freshman. Turned away. Now Armbrust breaking to the net. North Dakota captain at the outside of the net. All the fans wearing green jumped to their feet when they saw that net ball. Now, again, critical moments for Niagara to survive. They will do it by taking an ice. Well, they were feeling the pressure right there. No question that the Fighting Sioux have picked up their skating prowess in the early part of this third period. And with that, how do you slow them down? You, you get a stoppage. You do whatever you can to take some of that momentum away. And that's exactly what they have done, trying to slow down the Fighting Sioux. Even going back to last night's game when Darren Hadar scored for New Hampshire in the third period, Niagara, as you would expect with a senior veteran team, Tom, react very well with poise after a goal. Yeah, they really do, and that's one thing that uh, Blaze McDonald talked to his team about. He said, we know the fighting suit can score in bunches. We have to be ready for that. So if they get a goal against us, don't think we can just sit back because they'll come at us even harder. Fourth line for Niagara against first line for North Dakota. That is how committed Blaze McDonald is to this system. He will play his fourth line down by two in the third period against the North Dakota team that's really only played three lines today. Gorin around Makula. Gorin with Beta going to the net. Gorin retains possession. He's deep in the corner. Throws it to the middle looking for Ulmer. He'll have a second chance as he spins away. Good defense by Makula. Ulmer to the middle. Beta couldn't get good one on. North Dakota trying to put this thing away. They've got the firepower on the ice right now to do it. Beta pinned to the wall. Homer will chase. Mackle will beat him there. Homer looking to make another change. Gain center ice. 
directs it off the wall to avoid the icing. Zurich misses everybody, should be and will be icing against the Fighting Sioux. 325 gone by in the third period. North Dakota has failed twice in the national quarterfinals. Will a third time be the charm? North Dakota by two. We're back after these messages from the NCAA. Four in favor of the Fighting Sioux. They lead in this game by two goals by a score of three to one. Only one shot for both teams in this third period. It was the goal by Lee Gorin, his national leading 32nd of the year to give North Dakota this 3-1 lead. Lundbach, burst of speed. Lundbach! Goes it all the way through. Buak will chase down. Now Lundbach again, pulling it off the wall. Panzer, slows double up the lines here. Panzer, quick shot. Gardner calmly makes the stop. Back rebound. Gardner is there again. They are looking for the knockout punch. O'Connell. Rolls it in deep. Spiewak pulls it off the back wall. Has a man. Big drive by Roach, but it won't count. Man, the crease face off coming outside. I think I'll call Panzer for being in the crease there. You know, we talk about big players and, and what gamers they are, and it's what you do when you don't have the puck is so important. You see Gorin right there. He gets knocked down. He's out of the play. Everyone moves to the other side. And with that, all of a sudden, he comes right back into the play again, and uh, he's there to capitalize on a pass coming across. He's one of those guys that Dean Blaze has really stepped up for his hockey court. No question about that. With his size, too, at 6'3". And an imposing player in college ranks. When he played some major junior, he was ineligible in the first year. Imagine if you had had Lee Gorn on that national right. championship team in 97. They won it without him. I don't know they would have been with him. Boston Bruins will be eagerly anticipating Lee, the completion of Lee Gorn's college career. Notably. As a man, arm brush, North Dakota now with a two-goal lead, starting to float a man on the blue line, looking for that finishing blow as they sense Niagara will start to take some chances. Well, when we are finished here in the first national quarterfinal, the second national quarterfinal, go out, get yourself a snack, and settle in because this is the heavyweight matchup of this tournament's second round. Preseason number one team, Boston College, the current number one team, the Wisconsin Badgers. Boston College had to play overtime in a very physical game last night, but Tom Wisconsin is not playing their best hockey right now. Well, they didn't last weekend against North Dakota in the final game of the WCHA playoffs, but the problem, one of the problems you have is when you win the championship a few weeks in advance, and it happened in North Dakota, uh, North Dakota a few years ago, yep. you settled in thinking, oh, let's wait for the, the big dance, you know, we're just kind of having some fun here right now, but it's hard, hard to turn that back on. But Jeff Sauer said, you know, we will be ready. We weren't real impressed with what we did last week, but he said, now we want to advance, and in order to advance, we have to win. It's been a month since Wisconsin clinched the WCHA title and the automatic bid for the NCAA tournament. They actually clinched it on this ice here at Mariucci Arena, so a month has gone by between the time they clinched the NCAA spot and the time they will play their first game. Chris Sebastian to the middle, ends up on the stick of McDonald. He could not tee it up. Here comes Gorin the other way. Over across the line, but Gorin snuck across ahead of the play. Yeah, Gorin made the pass. He was watching the puck, but he wasn't watching where he was, and he was just over the blue line, so it takes away a, a scoring opportunity. When we talk about the players being drafted, there's three players that have been drafted by the NHL. You mentioned Gorin of Boston. Also Mike Commodore with the New Jersey uh, Devils, and you've got uh, with the Carolina Panthers, Brad Defoe. So these players all have a, for most of them, not all, but a lot of them would like to, to step up in the ranks of the professional, professionals and see what that's all about. The fall the senior played at Apple Valley High School, which is not too far from Minneapolis, just a couple miles down the road, where he was a high school teammate of Carl Guerin, the regular gold center for North Dakota, who was unable to play in this NCAA quarterfinal. His replacement, Andy Kohler, turns away the long drive. And the Spiewak begins the rush for North Dakota. The Biocon trickles through center. Look at the speed of Panzer. My goodness. All Rose can do is just try to tie him up. Wow. It looked like the rest of the game was going at 33 and a third. He was at 45. That was an old record reference for anyone under the age of 20. has no idea what the heck I'm talking about. Four CDs, they used to have these things that would spin around. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Isn't that what they still have? <laughs> All right, well, 
Maybe in we'll, my house, we'll, anyway. We'll talk about it during the intermission. You know, you mentioned Panzer. I watched him a few moments ago. One side of the ice, he takes a shot. It goes off of the, the goaltender, Gardner, to the other side. All of a sudden, there's a shot coming from the other side. He's the guy taking a shot from the other side, and he's just circling all the time. The one thing this team does so well is they cycle so well down low, and, and these guys never stop moving, and that's uh, one of the keys to the, the number of wins they've had this year and also the su uh, success that the players have had scoring-wise. You know, we see some teams like Boston College, Wisconsin, North Dakota, and in the day and age at the NHL level of neutral zone trap and expansion and defensive hockey, it is refreshing to see teams that want to run and gun, that play attack-style hockey and have the skilled players to make it fun to watch. Well, they, they can run and gun, with, I think, with the best of them right now. Well, we mentioned the quarterfinals will continue tomorrow at Pepsi Arena in Albany, and there still are some tickets available at the Pepsi Arena. Call 518-487-2000. Quarterfinal doubleheader is one of the best tickets you would ever want to find. Two great college hockey games with seasons on the line and a trip to Providence and the Frozen Four on the line. Boston University and St. Lawrence in the first quarterfinal in the East tomorrow, followed by Michigan and Maine. Quite a few people after a long day's work in Albany, New York, that are huddled up during the first set of quarterfinals here in Minneapolis tonight. Isherwood overskates. Ryan Hale for North Dakota. Lead finds Defoe. Defoe has a man. Noterman, he was on his off wing. Noterman has been very close on a lot of occasions in this game to breaking it open, but has not been able to break through. Heffernan, who has the Niagara goal in this game, misses connection with everybody, icing his way off as Missouri is back to play. Great game for the freshman Travis Roach. His lead is for Omer. Omer has a man breaking. It is Gorin, but the nation's leading goal scorer is offside. He had number 33 and a trip to the Frozen Four on his tape. 13.27 to go in regulation. Fighting Sue up by two. You're watching NCAA Productions coverage of the 2000 Ice Hockey Championship. Supplement your coverage. The NCAA Hockey Quarterfinals. This year, we haven't really talked about this yet this weekend, but there will be a gap, a week and a half, between the quarterfinals and the semifinals. And NCAA hockey and made a good decision several years ago to avoid going head to head with that. There's some other tournament that goes on this time of year. I'm not terribly familiar with it, but rather than go head to head on that weekend, you know, hockey has the weekend all to itself. And this year, because the schedules didn't really mesh, there will be no hockey next week. The teams that advance to Providence will have a full week and a half to prepare. And that can be good and that can be bad at the same time. For a lot of the players, they need that, they need that uh, game conditions, game uh, week in and week out. And when you don't get them, all of a sudden you become a little bit rusty. But what it does do is allow those bumps and bruises and those players who are injured to heal a little bit. Especially when you talk about the bye teams who will yep. have maybe only played one game over a span of almost three weeks. Right. Demo Makula from Niagara rolls it around. Pace is slowed here. Right now, for the moment, it's fine with North Dakota because they are in control. At some point, Niagara will have to turn it up offensively. We now know they can because they did it with 16 shots on goal in the second period. Unfortunately, they only have one here in the third, and that is not going to get it done if North Dakota keeps getting chances like that off the stick of Panzer. Boy, Panzer just one time that when he just came into the fold there, about 25 feet out, just a little bit off target where he wanted to be. Dean Blaze feeling a little more comfortable right now where his team is with a two-goal lead, but still plenty of time for the Purple Eagles to step in here. Dean Blaze, calm and under control. Blaze McDonald is and to take his team from the ultimate emotional high when they saw their name in the bracket last Sunday afternoon to getting them prepared to play in their first national tournament. Have they ever proved themselves worthy and given everyone in college athletics a tremendous story. Lead for Morris. He was onside. Long drive deflected by Roach up into the crowd. You know, Dean Blaze is one of those coaches also, one of the uh, few coaches that first year in to the uh, Frozen Four won the championship back in 1997. And those games were not close that year. I mean, they rolled through winning yeah. their three yeah. games. Tremendous team. 97 and as you know in this tournament that is very rare very rare indeed Dean of course last year needed overtime Michigan was overtime the year before against Boston College Michigan in 96 was overtime beating Colorado College the only other team uh, before that and in fact the only number one seed the last number one seed to win is Boston University they really rolled through the tournament in 1995 
of these teams is going to roll on to Providence, Rhode Island. In fact, the last number one seed to win, BU, won that tournament in 95. That was in Providence. Pressure on. Niagara has not quit yet. Morris, DiCaprio, John Marshall, his fourth line. Rating Niagara's best chance in a while. Still was not an official shot on goal. And Niagara still only has one in this third period after a 16-shot second period. And as we point out, the quarterfinals every year, the bye becomes a factor when teams have to play the previous night when you get to this third period. Isherwood, Niagara is in the middle of the player chair. Go will come out three on three. There's Nodeman across the line. Nodeman has a man breaking. It was the fall, but he could not find it. From the red line, Bazoyan dumps it in. No icing. Commodore back for North Dakota. This would be a nice pace for Niagara and control the game if they were up 3-1. Gardner comes out of his net. First time we've seen him do that, and it almost cost him the hockey game. Boy, did it ever. And that is, as you mentioned, we have not seen the goaltenders escape from that net very often in this game. But he goes out, and as soon as he went out, he realized, uh-oh, I think I'm in trouble. And that shot came from the far side. I believe that was uh, Beta who took the shot right along the boards. But you watch here, all of a sudden it comes out. Look where Gardner is. He's still turning. Now he's backing up. Now he falls. And it just hits the outside. And uh, very quickly, that could, could have had a big implication in this hockey game. Yikes. Gardner stops 68 of 72 shots this weekend. Not very good at skating backwards. Oh, it? I think he liked that with a race. Work, work on that. A race from the highlight. He looked like Superman all weekend, and we just found his kryptonite. <laughs> Timo Makala for the Purple Eagles. Senior laden team, the oldest team in the tournament. They are not going to panic. They remain methodical and committed to their system. They trail by two. Midway through the third period. This is the first of four national quarterfinals. Two tonight in Minneapolis, two tomorrow in Albany. Kyle Martin could keep it in the zone. Alma moves it out. Here's Ryan Beta. Beta fires glove. Save Gardner. Well, Beta looked like, like he was running out of gas on that one. He looked a little bit slow going in there, but the thing is he got the shot to the net, on the net. And Gardner had to come up with a save and a stoppage, and that will bring the face off back in the zone. You watch Bates as he comes in here. Puck's bobbling on him just a little bit. Doesn't get all everything out of the puck he'd like to. Gardner makes a save and just kind of shows everybody. I got it right here someplace. 10.05 to go in the third period. 3-1 to one in favor of North Dakota over Niagara. Team Blaze wanted 50 shots for his team. 38 counting with 10 minutes to go. One bomb on the draw. Spiewak bumped hard, loses possession. This is what we saw a lot from Niagara in the first period last night. They were able to clear the zone, but nothing offensively. Spiewak across the line, going to the outside. Spiewak has one bomb driving in the net. Knocked away by Colin Rose up into the crowd. Face off in the defensive zone. Another shaky area for Niagara this weekend. Well, Niagara has got to get possession of the puck and move it up, down, uh, up the ice right now. They are down by two goals, and they need to take some chances here. And Blaze McDonald trying to give his team that just a little bit of encouragement to keep on going here. He knows he's not out by long shot right now, but at this point, the clock starts to become a little bit of an enemy towards him. Blaze McDonald, finalist for Penrose Award, National Coach of the Year. And I think you'd have a pretty good shot at it. It's a story that you really could not have scripted. No, you could not. I mean, in four years. Uh, the thing is, recruiting these players. I mean, they went after the players. Uh, these kids that were not touted by anybody else in Division One, And so he had to kind of pick and choose and said, you know, we're, we'll start with a young team and we'll build from there. And uh, they certainly have done that with uh, 27 seniors they started with and 15 of those seniors are still with the program. I think there are some coaches watching this weekend saying, how is this team in the Elite Eight? Who are these guys and where was I four years ago when they were available to play? Timo Makala. Leads it down low. Now McKenzie in the corner. For Savonin. Two goals in the game last night against New Hampshire. The Zurich will get there first, and he will take the icing. Time winding down. North Dakota hoping the third time is the charm. Get back to the Frozen Four. They lead it by two. We'll be back after these messages from the NCAA. Laying back a little bit. 
instead of waiting, they seem to be waiting for Niagara to turn it up so that they can counter punch. Homer taps into the offensive zone. Doran, the nation's leading goal scorer, goes to the net, but doesn't find a shot. Santos and Doran tie it up. Doran, the nation's leading goal scorer. DeSantis, a player four years ago, not recruited by anybody. Blaze McDonald joked about his lack of conditioning when he first came to Niagara. <laughs> it's an unbelievable story. All of these guys, this, the land of misfit toys, the guys that nobody wanted, and here they are playing for a trip to the Frozen Four in the game with North Dakota in the third period. Hale across the line. Brooks drive. Blocked on the way. Never got through. Andrahan blocked it. Marshall trying to tip it out the center. Can't do it. He is neutralized. Comes out to the middle. Casper is there. Begins the rush. Marshall lost his helmet. He was going to the bench anyway. Ryan Hale, one of his talented North Dakota freshmen. New center ice. Throw in the zone. That's for Noteman. Three puck in the middle. Dangerous pass. Left clear of the zone. In by Sneakoff. Throw in the corner. That clock getting louder and louder. A disappointing couple of years in this tournament for the folks at Grand Forks. They've had some tremendous hockey teams the last couple of years, but they've been on the wrong side of these one game and out eliminations. North Dakota very close to too many men on the ice. And that cost Michigan State the hockey game last night. Yeah, it certainly did. Peacock behind his own net, spinning away from Randy Harris. The freshman who scored the Hagger's first goal in this tournament last night. Hands and rolls it in deep. Gardner calmly moves it to the corner. Hands and knocks it down. Timo Makala, Niagara defenseman, is spilled. Chris McKenzie picks him up. Without the experience and the age on this team, Chris McKenzie, 25 years old. Randy Harris, the freshman, another turnover. Panzer sends a man in. Spiewak, Polk check away, smoothest up by Gardner. Niagara comes out two on two. Long drive by Sebastian. Save made. By Andy Kohler, who has not been tested at all. It was just a second shot for Niagara in the third. Two on one. Panzer with Spiewak. Panzer. Spiewak. Score! Oh. Kevin Spiewak and the Fighting Sioux take another giant step towards Rhode Island. It's four to one. Well, once again, Panzer comes right into the fold here as he makes the perfect pass with a good speed. And when you take chances, as Niagara did there, they got trapped here a little bit. Odd man rush pays big dividends for the fighting suit. There's a pass across, and look at the room he has right there. No question, he just slugs away at that one to put it in. Kevin Spiewak, the freshman forward out of Illinois, scores a big goal for the fighting suit. The assist will go to number 17, Jeff Panzer, once again, and the other to Brian Lundboom, who started to play back deep. Not wow. much question about the player of the game right now. Jeff Panzer, his third assist. On the seventh goal of the year for Spielak. And now Niagara is in a world of hurt. North Dakota gives up 2.3 goals per game. Niagara needs three in the final 6.20 to force overtime. Earlier today in the East region, Colgate came from three goals down to force overtime against Michigan. Icing against North Dakota. It will begin with a face-off for Niagara in the offensive zone with 6.08 to go. For college hockey fans, I want you to grab a pen or pencil and write down some important phone numbers. You want to be a part, you see a sellout crowd at Mariucci Arena tonight. They want to be a part of the NCAA hockey tournament, the greatest show on earth. Next year, the East Regional returns to the Worcester Centrum where many of this tournament's great games of the past decade have been played. 508-931-2000 in Worcester, Massachusetts, and Grand Rapids, Michigan will host the West Regional, 616-387-8092. Goes in four next year in Albany, New York, which is hosting the East Regional this year. I know some people in college hockey know there's been some discussion about expanding the tournament to 16 teams. Even if the tournament does go to 16 next year, which the possibility is becoming less and less likely, those sites will host the region. Gardner again with Omer on the doorstep. Boy, what a pass by Gorn to get it right across ice. As he was standing right on the doorstep, as you mentioned, Omer is one of those guys who's so so quick with that stick. And Gardner had to come up with a big save again. What's Gorn? I mean, he takes a look. He's a long ways away also from that net. He just kind of battles everybody against the, the boards right here, makes the long pass across. Omer just kind of sneaks in behind everybody. Nobody's, nobody's sure he's quite there, but 
that's the one thing about the fighting suit. They make that quick pass, and all of a sudden you're trapped, and you've got to be aware of your surrounding and who's in behind you. Under six minutes to play now. North Dakota playing great hockey. They won the final five in the WCHH Championship Tournament. As Gardner, the goaltender, who we already established earlier, has trouble skating backwards, just tripped over the goalpost. You know, I watched him in the first period. He had trouble with a, a strap or something, and he was tucking it away a little bit. I don't know if that was the cause for that one right there, but he's uh, he's gone down a couple of times since then in this period. Well, we've finally shown that yes. he's human. Here we go. <laughs> he is, right? And it's a two-step. <laughs> well, I've been there before. I'll bet you have. <laughs> Many times. It is amazing. <laughs> I've done it where you like to just crawl underneath one of those face-off dots and pull it over you. There's no place to hide. It is only funny because <laughs> Gardner has been so brilliant and played with such poise all weekend, playing as if he's waiting for someone to bring him his dinner. And here he has two moments in which he just... Loses his edge and falls down. Well, I'll tell you, he has just had a superb game. I mean, you know, we look at Pants and how well he's played, and he's one of those players that can make, make it happen. You know, Rose is another guy who's really stepped up here. But the big difference in this game was the play of Gardner early on. Gardner has made 71 saves on the weekend. Probably be, I imagine. In fact, there's probably not much question about it. Gardner will be the all-region goaltender of this West Regional here in the year 2000. But time is winding down on this extraordinary story from Western New York. Chris McKenzie tied up, penalty call. Aaron that one takes the poke back at the fall. With 4.39 to go, Niagara will get a last gasp to jump back in the game. On the power play, they trail by three. They need one, and they need it soon. You're watching NCAA Productions coverage of the 2000 Ice Hockey Championship. Niagara power play, they are one for two tonight, one for four on the weekend. Just they need one and need it relatively quickly. Put some pressure on the fighting suit. One bomb. Pass picked off. Andrew Hand fires it in. Here comes Niagara. Santos. Colin Rose and his pass. He pulled it a little bit. Niagara will have to reset. Santos, one of the many seniors on this team. 13 of them in this game today. O'Connell, the senior for North Dakota, will play. You, know, you mentioned the Santos when he first came in the program. He is a little bit out of shape, as you mentioned. 235 pounds, I Just think. Just a little. And right now he's down to 100 and. 190 pounds. He's one of those players that played in the junior leagues, played in Fort Erie, Ontario for the Meteors. Turnover, gambling, Spiewak, short-handed. Gardner got a piece. He got enough of it. Penalty coming up on Niagara. Well, maybe a slashing call. I'm not quite sure, but I think that's what happened right at the uh, center ice area. And that will take away the opportunity they had on the power play as it rose heads to the penalty box with just 3.34 to go in the third period. It is on Colin Rose. Yeah. One more look. Official's very good at calling those those two-handers. We saw it last night, and there's another one. You can see this last coming. That's a little bit uh, little bit tight right there. Been hitting on sneak cloth. So now four on four for 54 seconds. After which, North Dakota will go to the power play. Niagara University, four years ago, when these seniors entered school, they were the pioneers. There had been no program there before them. McKenzie has a man. Silvone in point blank, and Kohler saves his best for last. Here comes Spiewak with the open ice in the four on four. Spiewak run to the wall. That may have been Niagara's final chance to jump in the game. With so much attention placed on Greg Gardner, and rightly so in the net for Niagara, Andy Kohler, the sophomore, in his NCAA tournament debut, has done the job. Knee clock. 
for the Sioux. Ball returns to the ice. North Dakota power play. And the curtain is closing on this extraordinary story in college athletics. DeSantis sending down the distance. Doran goes to the net. As Missouri jumps into the play. See the time remaining on the North Dakota power play. They scored early in the first on a goal by Ryan Beta, a power play goal by Mike Commodore late in the first. Niagara had the better of the play in the second period. Homer for Roach, point blank. Gardner makes his 38th save. Well, Roach got the shot away very quickly, which he had to do. Uh, I think he'd like to have that shot over again so he could pull it back, but all of a sudden he had a man right in on top of him. And Gordon doing a nice job of moving the puck around, making certain that the uh, right plays are going to be made. You watch here, look at the, the save on Kohler. I mean, you know, here's a guy who just stands there, and uh, we talk about players being able to handle the puck so well. He may not handle that, but the thing that he can do so quickly is react to the shot coming in here. Very quick reflexes. I think it would be safe to suggest uh, with the extra week off, Carl Gehring will be healthy for the national semifinals. What does Dean Blades do then? Nice problem to have, but it's still a problem because they both want to play. North Dakota will face the winner of Maine and Michigan, their quarterfinalist tomorrow. Travis Roach has had a great game offensively. Sets up Lundbaum. Snapped it wide. And Zurich keeps it in. Lundbaum gets it back. Lundbaum shot deflected wide. Power play is over. And Zurich through traffic. Shot is blocked. Four years ago, as we said, there was no program in Niagara. Two years ago, they were still playing some conference games outdoors. They began this year with only the slimmest of hopes to make the NCAA tournament. Sebastian has turned away at the line. They knew they would have to win near 30 games, and they did. Notre is in. Save made by Gardner. This one gobbled up by Armbrus, the North Dakota captain. They qualified by winning their conference tournament. They won enough games outside of the conference to earn the bid. Stunned New Hampshire last night in the first round to earn this trip. But the clock is about to strike midnight. A senior class from Niagara University that will never, ever be forgotten. From zero to the Elite Eight in four short years. Defense to the end by Schneekloff. I'll guarantee you, you know, this is the team that, as you mentioned, will remember this for a long time. And what a great tribute it's been to the, the program here in, in that length of time. And Blaze McDonald should be congratulated for what he's done. And now the, the toughest part is repeating it for next year. Across the line comes Nordman. One final chance. It is deflected up and bounces free. For the last two years, the North Dakota Fighting Sioux have been upset in the quarterfinals. The third time is the charm. North Dakota is headed to Providence. And this will be their first time going back since they won it back in 1997. The goal was to win this game. Dean Blaze has done that. He wanted 50 shots. He didn't get that. He got 43. But that's pretty close anyway. But the most important thing to him right now is that he gets a chance to enjoy the victory of this hockey game against a team I think after two periods he was a little suspect of what was going to happen. All year long, North Dakota was sort of lying in the weeds. Wisconsin got all the attention. North Dakota knew they had a team that could win a national championship. Now they will get a chance to prove it in two weeks at the Frozen Four in Providence, Rhode Island. A valiant effort falls short tonight by Niagara University. North Dakota is going to Providence. They win it 4-1. to one. We're back to wrap it up. You're watching NCAA Productions coverage of the 2000 Ice Hockey Championship. There's only one place online with Fighting Sioux of North Dakota. The better team for 60 minutes. They end the Cinderella run of the Purple Eagles of Niagara by a final score of 4-1. To one, and with it, North Dakota takes the first spot in the Frozen Four. And they will face the winner of Michigan and Maine tomorrow. When a team faces a, a great story like Niagara, oftentimes you end up shortchanging them because the other story is so compelling. But North Dakota has had a phenomenal year, and 